Today we're creating a shadow monster from Stranger Things and turning it into a cinemagraph. Hey guys and welcome to Flearn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Flearn.com where we make learning fun. And if you're anything like me, you're totally obsessed with Stranger Things, which just came out with season two. I've watched the entire thing from start to finish. And I thought it was a perfect opportunity to show you how to make a still from the show in Photoshop. So we're gonna go pretty quick because there's a lot of steps. We're gonna build this entire thing from scratch in Photoshop and then show you how to animate it as well. So you get a cinemagraph at the end. Weird stuff, <laughs> unfamiliar junk. First things first, when you're creating a scene like this with a lot of different layers, you always wanna make sure to start at the farthest thing away from you and work forward. So in this case, we're building the clouds, then we're building the lightning, then some building, and then the trees, then the monster, then the wires, and everything in front of it. So we're going from back all the way to front. This entire image was done with stock photos and some hand-drawn elements, and you can download these stock photos on Florin.com. Just follow the link in the description right down below. When working on a composition like this, I like to start in black and white. So I just created a black and white adjustment layer, put this on the top of everything. You can always turn it off or delete it at any time. It just helps you see overall tone and composition a little easier. So we're starting out with our background here. Now we wanted a stormy sky, so I found a stormy sky background and then duplicated it, set that layer to multiply and masked it in. This will allow us to to create even more drama to create a more stormy sky. Now, because we're using a lot of cloud type shapes and shadowy figures, we need a brush that's going to help us make those shapes. And you can download this brush on flurn.com. Just follow the link in the description right down below. So after building our cloud background, it's time to import our lightning. And this is again, just a stock photo. Now, the cool thing about lightning, it's a light color on a dark background. So you can just change your blending mode of that layer to screen, the lightning is gonna show up and your background's gonna disappear. Now you can always tweak this a little bit using a levels adjustment layer, just make your blacks even darker and just your lightning's gonna show up. Crazy! Next, we're gonna build in some more background elements. So in this case, we've got some trees and some buildings we need to create. So the trees are just from a stock photo. It was a house and some trees on there. We just create a copy of the blue channel and adjust the levels to bring the blues a little bit brighter. That's basically gonna make the sky completely white. And you can turn this into a selection by holding control or command, clicking on that thumbnail and then inverting your selection. Now that you have your selection, just create a new layer and fill that selection with black, which is gonna give you black trees and a black house. Now you can use a bunch of different stock photos from different kinds of trees. In this case, we just duplicated these trees, flipped them around, changed the size of this, basically enough so you see some variation and it doesn't look like you've got the same tree over and over again. Now it's time to create the buildings and because everything is in silhouette, it's just black, just grab your polygonal lasso tool, make a selection that looks kind of like a building and then fill it with black. Do this a couple of times from the left to the right side of your images and you've got buildings. So now that we've got our background created, it's time to build our shadow monster. Now this is done completely from scratch using this same cloud brush. Basically just looked at references from Stranger Things clips and just drew the whole thing by hand. Because we have a head, we have a body, and we have some legs, do the three of those on different layers. Then you can change the brightness levels to make the head look a little bit darker because it's closer to the camera and the feet look lighter because they're farther away. Now my suggestion is to make these a little bit larger than you need to and then just pop a layer mask on that, use the same cloud brush and then layer mask away the legs. This basically makes them look like they're disappearing into the clouds. We still need to put it in the scene just a little bit more, so we create a few more clouds in front of the monster, which really puts it back into the sky. What? Up until now, we've been working in black and white just so we can look at our tones. And now it's time to color, which we're gonna do with a gradient map. Now, gradient maps are incredibly cool. Basically, you can choose your light range from darks all the way to light and choose different colors along your gradient. So for instance, your darkest darks are gonna be black, then it's gonna get to dark reds and a little bit lighter reds, then we're gonna get some yellows in there and our lightest points is gonna be white. This is a really great way to color an entire scene, especially when you're working in the same color palette. And for this image, the background's gonna be in this red color palette and the foreground we're gonna add some blue lights. The gradient map adjustment layer will color everything beneath it. So the monster, the clouds, the lightning, all that is being colored by one gradient map. Working forward, and now it's time to add some wires and some lamp posts to really set the monster back into space. So for this, we grabbed a stock image of a telephone pole with a bunch of wires everywhere. Now it's a light background with dark wires. So we're gonna use levels to make the sky completely white and then change the blending mode of this layer to multiply, which makes dark appear and lights disappear because we want the dark wires to show up and not the background. Was that clear? 
Okay. And here we're just gonna use the lasso tool to select out a couple of wires we want deleted and just add those to the layer mask. To add a little bit more depth, we're gonna duplicate the telephone pole, shrink it down, and then we're gonna be creating some wires from scratch. This is actually super fun and easy to do. Super fun. So we're gonna use the pen tool. Click on your start point and then click and drag on your end point. It's gonna get you a little bit of curve in that line. Then go over to your paths dialog, right click on this path and go down to stroke path. In this case, we're gonna choose the brush tool, which will stroke the path with the exact brush that you're using. Bring our brush size really small and bring our hardness up, put it on a new layer and then go to stroke path. With our pen path, now we have a brush stroke right on the pen path, which becomes a telephone pole wire. Next, just move the path a couple of times. You can move your start point, you can move your end point, you can change the curve in the path. And each time you do this, just hit stroke path and you got a new telephone wire. So you can do this with larger or smaller wires and really just fill your scene with any kind of wire detail. And it wouldn't be a Stranger Things image without moss and weird shit growing everywhere. So we found some stock images of plants and trees like that. Selected out that background color. Okay, going to select down to color range. Click on that little plus eyedropper and add your background. We're going to turn this into a selection, then invert the selection and fill that with black. Shit in there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So basically we now have a completely black silhouette that's kind of in the shape of some plants. So we're going to shrink that down and warp it to make it look like it's hanging from these telephone wires and then duplicate it. Of course you could go out and photograph your own moss, but we're just going to do this. It's going to pretty much look exactly like we need. Now I wanted some cool lampposts in there and I couldn't find a stock image of lampposts that I actually like. So because everything is here is silhouette, we can just make this from scratch. Really easy to do. Just grab your rectangular marquee tool, make a couple of selections and then fill that with black. Then I warped it to add a little bit more interest to the lamp post. So just right click on that layer, go to warp and drag it straight down. That gives a little bit of arc in the lamp, making it look more realistic. The ball was just hand drawn as well. Basically just grab the pen tool, click on the left side, do an arch on the top and an arch on the bottom and fill it with a light blue color. In this case, I wanted two light posts. So we just duplicated that whole thing, shrunk it down, flipped it horizontally and we've got two. So we got a couple light posts. Now it's time to add a little bit of spread of light coming from the lamp post. So we're using the same cloud brush we've used earlier. Just bring your flow really, really low down to like one or 2% flow. Sample that blue color and simply paint around there. Be sure to add more light closer to the bulb and then let it fade out naturally. It's gonna give you that really nice atmospheric light effect. Then we're gonna add a couple more details to the foreground of our image, which really gives it depth. So I got a picture of some street lights here, select out the background, delete it, fill this with black. You know the deal by now, we're creating silhouettes and then put this on the very top of everything. This is gonna make the light from the street light look like it's behind this, making the wires look behind that, making the monster look behind that and the lightning behind that. So we're really building a lot of depth in this image. And as far as our image goes, we're done, but we're not done with the tutorial because we're gonna animate it. So creating a cinemagraph in Photoshop is actually relatively simple. You can keyframe any of your layers. Started off by selecting all the layers, duplicating these onto a new document. Then I went ahead and changed the size down to about 2000 pixels wide. Because we're animating, we don't need this to be huge. I wanted to work on a smaller document. Next, group everything that's not going to be animated. So in this case, I'm grouping everything, leaving my lightning out. So we've got a photo of lightning and we want it to flash like actual lightning. So we're gonna keyframe the opacity of this layer. Just click on that little clock icon and it's gonna add a keyframe. Now you can change your opacity and that's going to be the opacity at that point. If you wanna add another point, simply move that slider along and change your opacity. Did you say how to get to the timeline? Oh, okay. So to get to your timeline, just go to window down to timeline, and then you want to create a video timeline. All your layers and groups are in this timeline. Left is the beginning, right is the end. And you can drag that right hand slider a little bit closer. That's just going to shorten down your time frame. Don't forget about that play button. That's how we're going to test our animation and see if your lightning flashes actually looks like lightning flashes. It's going to go through slow the first couple times while it renders, then it'll go at actual speed. So for the lightning animation, I wanted the lightning to kind of flash a couple of times and then go away. So we started off with an opacity keyframe at zero, making it invisible. Then moved along to the slider, bumped it all the way up to 100. So boom, we got a lightning flash at 100% visibility. Added a little bit more variation, made it darker, then lighter again, and then had it disappear again. Now, obviously lightning doesn't look the exact same every single time it flashes. So for this, we just brought in another lightning image and then applied the same treatment we did before. Just set the layer blend mode to screen, use that levels adjustment layer to darken the darks a little bit, which made the lightning show up. And now we've got two different sets of lightning that we can time. Also, the lightning is going to brighten up the 
sky. So we use that cloud brush to paint white under our gradient mask. So it's gonna show up as this yellow color. And then we keyframed this to go along with the lightning flash. So the lightning is gonna flash and the sky is gonna get brighter at the same time. Then we did the exact same thing for the light posts. The lightning you want invisible, then visible, then invisible again. For the lamp posts you want visible, then slightly dim, then visible again. So we set our opacity keyframes to 100%, then back down to 50%, then back up to 100%, giving us that light flash effect. Now for this, honestly, I did want to keyframe the monster itself, but if you wanted the legs to actually move and things like that, that has to be done in After Effects. Your motion control is a little bit limited in Photoshop. So we just threw a little bit of opacity control on the monster. So as the sky flashed, so that the monster flashed a little bit lighter and a little bit darker. It's subtle, but it just gave it a little bit more movement. So that's it for the animation. It's time to export it out. So go to File, down to Export, and Save for Web. Should I say GIF or GIF? I usually say GIF, but I don't really give a shit. So this dialog is gonna default to a JPEG. Go ahead and change that to a GIF, which will support animation and change your looping from once to forever. Then to see if this thing actually works on the web, click on that preview button, which is gonna open in your default browser. And here we can see our cinemagraph shining like a bright beacon of hope. It's also a monster. It's also may kill you and your whole family. But it's shiny. But it's shiny. If you want to export this at a little higher resolution, go to File, down to Export, and over to Render Video. Here I suggest using H.264. You can render this out as large as you'd like, and you've got a video file that you can upload to Instagram. And that's how we create a shadow monster and a cinemagraph from scratch in Photoshop. We did it. We did it, guys. Guys, thanks so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. We went through a ton of stuff in a short period of time. Let us know what you like about this new format that we're trying out in the comments right down below. And as always, enjoy Stranger Things and watch more Flurn, because that's how you get better at life. Thanks so much, guys. I'll Flurn you later. Bye, everyone.